Everybody who's standing in this hall, please sit down because the session starts within a few minutes' time. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the final hour of our conference. Time flies, at least in my opinion, these days. My name is Paula Verhoeven. I'm the climate director of the city of Rotterdam, director of the climate office, and co-organizer of this conference. We are very happy to see that you've come in such great numbers, even at such a late time in the conference. And we are very proud that um, to have seen so many scientists, experts, policymakers, and politicians in the last few days discussing all the topics and issues about climate change. And we're very proud that there were about 1,200 participants in this conference, not only people who, uh, who applied for the conference, but who registered as well and were here. So I think we really had a very intense discussion with one another. And all those participants were invited to contribute to the three major goals of this conference. In the first place, they came here to exchange knowledge on climate change and on delta planning. In the second place, the conference was meant to strengthen the relation between delta cities and deltas in general. And in the third place, we wanted to explore and, and strengthen the links between science, policy, and practice. And I think that it's fair to say that we've made very good progress on all three of these. We've had 72 parallel sessions where we exchange knowledge. We celebrated the second anniversary of the Connecting Delta Cities Network. And yesterday, we celebrated in a very nice ceremony, the launch of the Delta Alliance. Even this morning, we had three round table discussions which were very interesting on very important topics considering climate change. And we would take a few minutes to uh, reflect on these round tables and bring back to you the results of them. And therefore, I want to welcome three people who were in the roundtable sessions and will tell you about them. In the first place, Henk van Schaik, who will report back uh, about the roundtable on financing adaptation. A very interesting discussion. In the second place, Rory McLeod, journalist and media trainer and chair on the roundtable on building community and chances for business and climate adaptation. And in the third place, I would like to give the floor to Barbara Groom, who chaired the round table on the role of cities in the climate adaptation progress, uh, climate adaptation process, I'm sorry. So Henk van Schaik, may I give the floor to you, please? Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to report to you what happened in the uh, roundtable on finance. Um, and um, I do that with a couple of slides. Uh, I have been able to see the presentations of the uh, presenters, so I've picked what I believe to be the main points um, of their presentations and the debate. Um, and that's what I'll do. And I believe that also what actually came out is, uh, is, is in, in, in agreement with the, uh, with the uh, slides I have here. Uh, the first uh, introductory presentation was about what are we talking about? What is the amount of money required for adaptation? The World Bank recently uh, carried out a uh, study, Economics of Adaptation to Climate Change, and uh, which was supported including by the Dutch government, and that study resulted in figures up to approximately 
70 to 100 billion dollars annually. And what you see here, this was presented by Professor Huge, what you see here is that uh, though the figures are, have a wide variety, uh, water related, which is in the broadest sense, water, land, energy related, agriculture, is approximately up to 70% of that 100 billion. The conclusions of the presentation by Professor Huge were one, that there are large differences between climate scenarios when it comes to costing over time for Delta countries, especially in East Asia and Latin America. But we can't wait 30 years for precise science. We have to act now. We have to start with activities that support adaptation. And in the discussion, for your information, it was made very clear that supporting adaptation is not necessarily on the basis of attribution or climate-specific incremental costing exercises, which are very complicated. We had also a very brief reflection on COP15, which, as you know, turned out uh, with uh, pledges up to 30 billion for 2012 and 100 billion for 2020. But we heard from the Adaptation Fund that the estimated contributions by 2012 only come to approximately 350 or so uh, US dollars. So the expectation that the 100 billion will be uh, collected or disbursed through the Adaptation Fund is pretty unrealistic. What we also observed here, but also already in Copenhagen, is that rather than the adaptation community having to move to the mountain as Mohammed, the mountain is now opening up for initiatives from sectors uh, such as water. So, but then the question is, what does Mohammed do? There are, we heard this morning, new initiatives. One is by the international financing institutions who are talking about formulating uh, what is supporting adaptation, and in particular in relation to coastal defense, flood protection, and water storage. UNDP also supports a lot of adaptation activities in addition to the adaptation fund under the UNFCCC. We know about bilateral partnerships coming up, such as, for example, Water Mondial, which was presented here uh, several times, uh, the US-Spain-Costa Rica partnership. We heard a very strong message by the mayor of Toronto, Mayor Miller, uh, from the C40, also taking up initiatives. We heard about the uh, connecting Delta cities, and we had very interesting insights from the private sector, which is very much on the basis of, say, economic uh, returns, interested in investing in infrastructure, particularly also water-related. Now, looking at COP17 and COP16, we had a representative from Mexico. As I said, Mohammed, the mountain is moving to Mohammed, and that means that, in practical terms, the government of Mexico and beyond the government of Mexico, South Africa, the government of South Africa, the Minister of Water for South Africa, are opening up or are, have expressed interest to pay attention in side events within the uh, COP uh, building, but also outside to water-related uh, issues. In addition, there is a water and climate coalition which includes organizations including like IUCN, <coughs> the Stockholm Water Institute, World Wildlife Fund, IWA, etc., uh, addressing negotiators to ask their attention for water in the broadest sense. And there is a water and climate initiative, as we heard from the World Bank this morning, uh, starting up, uh, which is especially directed at sharing best practices on supporting adaptation. And large institutions such as World Bank, Wildlife Fund,